Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at an operating system that's very hard to pronounce. It goes like this, Corora, <laughs> I believe, um, Corora, Corora. The way I try to remember it is, I mean, it, I, if there are any Trekkies out there, which like Star Trek obviously, um, that are familiar with Deep Space Nine, then I try to think of it as uh, like Core to Har Master. <laughs> then it's sort of like Core Ora. <laughs> if you um, get what I mean there. So I'm going to be generous, give it 4 gigs of RAM. I set up a virtual disk, 24 gigs of storage. Attach the ISO and boot it up. Yes, very hard to pronounce. <laughs> um, oh, this is interesting. So it's going to automatically boot up anyway, but it looks like some sort of diagnostic screen. Hmm, not quite sure what that was. I suppose if you've already installed this and it goes wrong, then maybe that's something that can help you uh, fix the OS. So, I'll just quickly wait for this to boot um, either to the live CD desktop or whether it asks you whether you want to do that or whether you want to install straight away. Right, so um, let's come straight to a live DVD desktop. Let's just go ahead and install it straight away then. I mean, sometimes, for example, in Ubuntu, I believe that's exclusively for um, virtual machines. It does ask you whether you want to try Ubuntu or whether you just want to install it straight away. Um, and on this one, it just goes straight to the try option, I suppose. So English UK, that's fine. And let's go on this one. That all checks out, it's fine. If it'll ever go back, there we are. Save in storage configuration and English UK. Uh, Europe, London time zone, it's fine. I mean, it's just saving the storage configuration, so let's just wait on that. Right, begin installation. Okay, shall we create a user? I think we should. Now, I've got a ridiculously bodged um, microphone holder, so it is incredibly difficult to see what I'm typing on the keyboard. Um, let's make that a, an administrator account. Done. Ooh, it doesn't make you type in a password. Won't bother with the root password obviously. Now features about this system. Um, start with the system requirements actually. Uh, so it needs 2 gigs of RAM, at least 20 gigs of storage space. So I've given this 24 so that'll be alright. It needs a 64-bit processor, and if you're putting it on a real computer, it's recommended that you use a USB stick rather than a DVD. Although, let's face it, most people these days don't use DVDs to install um, operating systems on computers. So, um, its main features... Sorry, uh, its main features is it's based on Fedora Linux. Uh, which is pretty stable anyway. I presume this installation process is quite similar to that, although I don't actually use Fedora, um, so I'm not quite certain. Um, now, it comes with five desktop environments. I think I might have already mentioned this, um, but it comes with the Cinnamon desktop environment, the GNOME, uh, KDE Mate, and ZFCE, which is the one with that funny mouse in the logo. Um, <laughs> Although I do like all of them, I slightly prefer GNOME, so I'm putting the GNOME version on this. 
The interesting thing is, when you're actually downloading it, you can uh, pick and choose which one you actually want. So, for example, if you like Linux Mint, then obviously you're going to go for Cinnamon. Um, or so on, really. Uh, now, there might be a 32-bit version, according to one of the pages on their website. However, I was unable to find this on their actual download page, which is quite disappointing, but um, eh, it doesn't really matter that much. Now, it comes with several pre-installed programs, uh, for example, Firefox with a couple of extensions, VLC, and so on and so forth, um, making it a bit easier so you don't have to manually go and download those things yourself. Um, now, one of the project's main goals is to support as much hardware as possible, so it should be okay on most computers. However, I'm going to get back to that in just a moment. Um, because of as of the 2nd of May 2018, an official announcement stated that the project would be halted for the foreseeable future. Although they didn't say the project would be stopped altogether, they're simply just taking a break, I suppose, and a well-deserved one at that, as the next, um, well, as one of the quotes that I've got from that is, our team is infinitesimal, currently one developer and two community managers. So the project will probably resume again at some point, and obviously they have got a very small development team, so, um, I mean, it's understandable that, um, obviously they want to hold that, because that's probably taken up all of their free time and then some. Um, so anyway, let's just wait for this to install now. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's, so far it's been a nice little distro, really. I mean, I do hope they obviously come back and resume this again, because I, I do support all these little projects. Because um, it is quite nice to have a bit of diversity uh, amongst the sort of operating system community, really. So, let's just uh, speed the video up now and wait for it to install. Right, so it is now saying it's completed. Um, go ahead and reboot, it says. So let's press quit. I presume it will reboot by itself. Or well, if it just closes this, then that probably means that we have to reboot it manually. Right, so I think we have to re reboot this one manually. Doesn't want to do anything, obviously. And let's get ready with ejecting this. Right. Oh, we got two on there. Let's just go with the first one. See what happens. <laughs> um, so it should be fully installed. Still got mouse pointer integration. That's nice. Hasn't adapted to the resolution of the confines of a virtual box as of yet, but I'm not too bothered about that. Um, so let's just go around and explore once it's done, I suppose. Okay, so it's now completed. It's a nice distort background now, I like them boats. Um, oh, we've got the welcome screen again. Oh, and we've got another big welcome screen. Um, so English UK, English UK. Going to turn that off. Um, well, simply because I don't want any of you lot seeing where I live. <laughs> no offence. Um, so let's just skip the online bit. Continue using. Hmm. 
And that's the getting started screen there. I'm not going to bother too much with that. See what new features they've got, shall we? Now, GNOME 3.24, LibreOffice 5.3. Um, now, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I mean, I've, this is about take 2000 because it keeps going wrong. Um, but I'm not sure if I mentioned, obviously, they've halted the development of this system. Uh, well, they think it's probably going to be temporary, but um, hopefully not anyway. Uh, so a few things are out of date, uh, LibreOffice 5.3, obviously 5.4 something or other, is the latest version of LibreOffice, so that's a little bit behind, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and yeah, let's just have a look at some of the applications, shall we? Now I suspect most of these things are not going to be quite up to date as of yet, obviously Firefox. Um, that will probably be before Firefox Quantum was released. Um, but we have got a nice selection of applications. Like obviously we've got, as I say, Firefox for the web browser. Audacity, um, cal a calendar application, a calculator. Um, let's see what else we've got. Quite a few other things, obviously LibreOffice. VLC, which is always good. And GNOME software. Let's try to install something, shall we? That may take a while. I mean, I believe this was last updated in 2017, so... It's gonna download a lot of things. Um, shall we have a look at something else while it's doing that? Yes, so... Let's have a look at some of their applications, like Calendar, for example. It's quite nice. Downsize that slightly. Almost the theme almost reminds me of um, Mac OS X. Just the way it's all sort of very um, practical yet elegant. So can we add? Oh yes, we can add events. So you can't check birthdays and anniversaries for some reason. Don't know why, you can only check personal. Um, but it's a nice little application all the same. What's that? Hmm. Um, so that's still downloading a software category. Catalog, I should say. Yeah, so I mean I won't bother with that too much, I just like, um, when I install these distros I always like just installing something to see if it all works properly. Um, so there are quite a few interesting applications as I say. LibreOffice, I like the way how they um, have got these custom icons for everything, although that might be a Fedora thing. Obviously I don't use Fedora very often, so I don't quite know, but um, well, obviously, as I can see, they do use slightly different um, icons to the ones that the application uses by default. Let's put that away. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. But one thing I have noticed as well with these applications, if, if you look at the top banner up here, I'm going to drag this around. We've also got this nice sort of aero glass um, transparency thing going on, which if you're a Windows person. You all know what that means, which is always quite nice. Um, so let's have a look at something else as well. Display settings. Oh, it's got option for a night light as well. I wonder what that does. Does it make it go yellow like most of them? change your background and see what desktop backgrounds they've got while GNOME software is working on doing something. So 
So we've got quite a few really nice ones in here actually. It's quite slow to scroll but I'm not too bothered about that. Quite like that one. It's nice, isn't it? Oh, so this is done. Let's have a look at this. So, I think it's done anyway. There we are. It's all coming to life now. Try to install Blender, shall we? I just want to see um, if it installs programs properly and doesn't crash. So I'll use Blender as an example. Hmm. Let's see what version of VLC we've got, shall we? Three point oh. Okay, so it's now installed. Let's go ahead and launch it then. Make sure it launches properly and, and that's it. Right, so that has launched properly. And I'm not going to do a review of Blender, but um, that was just a demonstration to show that the software center works and that it installs properly. And it does, so that's good. Um, so, I mean, I don't think there's much else I can talk about, really. Let's open files and see which one this is. The files authors. Um, so that's got quite a nice layout anyway. So I believe that just about rounds it up for this video really. Um, I mean I do hope you enjoyed this video and I know it went a bit slow at times but um, it's mostly waiting around for the system to do stuff. So anyway I mean I do hope they resume the development on this because it is quite a nice system uh, although I do respect that obviously they've got their lives to get back to and not just this operating system. Um, and I can totally understand and respect that. So I believe that just about draws this video to a close. Um, if you did enjoy this video then feel free to support my channel, not by giving it any money but by simply subscribing to it as that gives me some more motivation to make future ones and I believe that's basically it really. Um, so as I say once again thank you all very much for watching and well, goodbye.